Now, if you're like me, you have tried a lot of planners <laughs> over the years and you've struggled to find one that will stick. One that had everything you wanted, but was also flexible enough to adapt to your needs, especially when those needs fluctuated throughout the year. Here are some considerations that will help you find the perfect planner for you. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura and I help you live a simpler, happier, more spacious life. And part of living a simpler life is planning for a simpler life. You know, it's being intentional about how you spend your time. It's not cramming your schedule too full. It's leaving yourself that breathing space, figuring out what your true priorities are and then focusing on those. And obviously it's going to be really hard to do that if you don't have the right tool for the job. You can't really plan a simple life in a planner that is not simple and easy to use. Take these things into consideration then when it comes to choosing the right planner for you. First consideration then is accessibility. Is it going to be accessible to you when and where you need it. For example, if you have a desk planner and that's great and you use it all the time, but it stays on your desk, that's not much good to you if you need to use it when you're out and about. This is probably one of the biggest reasons why I switched to digital planning because I didn't always want to carry a physical planner with me. You know, I did it for a while, but some days it was just a nuisance. So it was much easier for me to switch to a digital planner, something that I would have with me that was just easier to bring with me rather than having an actual physical planner. So nowadays I can access mine from my phone, which, you know, apart from the shower, <laughs> I pretty much bring it everywhere. And not only do I find that it's more accessible to me digitally, but it's across multiple devices then as well. So if, for example, I want it on a bigger screen, you know, when I'm in my office, I can look at it on my laptop. And then when I'm out and about, like I said, I can use my phone or if I'm kind of moving about the house, I can use my tablet. No matter where I am, I have access to a version of it. So that is something to take into consideration. Is your planner going to be accessible to you in all of the different situations and circumstances and places that you would need it? Another similar consideration is portability. Is it going to be easy to carry with you wherever you need to go? Like, is it big and bulky? Is it heavy? Will it fit in the bag that you bring with you? You know, everything seems light and easy breezy when you first pick it up, but after you've carried it around all day, then not so much. On the flip side though, a pocket planner seems like a great idea until you actually need a little bit of space to write anything down. So take size and bulk and shape and weight into account when it comes to choosing the right planner for you. Are you going to be happy, willing and able to carry that thing around with you all day long if needs be? Again, this is probably one of the major benefits of digital planning. Not only is a digital planner usually much lighter <laughs> than a physical planner, but chances are you are going to be bringing at least one of these devices with you anytime you go anywhere. So yeah, consider its portability. Now, if you work in a home office like I do and you barely ever leave it, then a physical planner might be just perfect for you. But if you know that you're going to be out and about a lot, walking around and your bag is already pretty heavy or it's pretty compact and you can't squeeze anything else in there, then chances are a digital planner may be the way to go for you. Now, this next one might just be for the perfectionists in the house. <laughs> but how often does your schedule change and how easy is it for you to move things around when it does? This was probably the final nail in the coffin for me for physical planners. I mean, I still have lots of them. But that's just because they're pretty, right? But uh, my schedule, particularly after I had my daughter, um, it just changed a lot. So uh, I was finding when I was writing things down, I would then have to like scribble them out or try and use some form of white out, move them around. Um, you know, I tried sticky notes and stuff, but then it just got really messy. Yeah, I did not like that at all. <laughs> so that may be something for you to consider. Or maybe you have a pretty set schedule. Things don't change too frequently or you're just not a perfectionist like me and you don't mind scribbling out the occasional thing. But yeah, for me, I wasn't happy to do that. So I found that with digital planning, it was so much easier for me to just like 
copy and paste or cut something out or move it or just erase it. So yeah, consider kind of how many moving parts are in your planner. Or how often do you have to move things around? How much of a perfectionist are you? And if you do need to move things around frequently and you don't like mess, then chances are, again, a digital planner may be a better way for you to go. Okay, let's talk privacy because sometimes you might have some stuff in your planner that you don't want anyone else to see. You know, the things that you write in it are just for you. Maybe you use it to uh, track your period or maybe you write down, you know, gift ideas that you don't want those people to see. And it's no one else's business that you see a therapist every week or that you have a specific event coming up or what your plans are for Friday evening. Plus planners generally will contain some form of personal or sensitive information. Now, some people are total open books when it comes to their planners. You know, they don't mind people <laughs> seeing what is inside them. Um, or maybe, again, you might work from home and kind of never leave the house with your planner. So it's not really a huge consideration, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. If you don't care, any planner is probably going to work for you. But if privacy is a big consideration, then again, digital may be the way to go because generally your device will have some form of password protection on it. And maybe even the particular app that you're using, you might be able to lock your notes so that even if someone does get into your phone, they would still then need an additional password to get into your specific planner. Now, there aren't too many private things in my planner. Like I just jot down every day normal things somebody would be bored probably <laughs> reading my planner but there are some things in there like small things like maybe even referen referencing you know my daughter's school or you know our neighbors there might be some identifying information in there that I wouldn't want necessarily just any old person to see and as I follow up to that then let's talk lost planners and I mean that in uh, like both senses of the word maybe you might misplace it somewhere but also you might lose it by you know spilling your coffee all over it and losing the contents of it or the dog might eat it bigger and bigger consideration for me these days but all the different ways that you could lose either your planner itself or the information contained therein this has thankfully never happened to me but if it did I would be devastated like my life would just fall apart basically without my planner not only is it really difficult if not impossible to recreate everything that was in that planner but even if you do have to do that or if you can do that it's a huge amount of work this is where having a backup of your planner is so important now if you have a physical planner it's definitely doable you could take a photograph for example, of your planner page each day, or maybe you scan in your planner pages. It is doable, probably a little bit awkward, but not impossible. If you have a digital planner, then it's simply a matter of saving it. A lot of planner or note-taking apps will have automatic backups, so you don't even have to think about it. Once it's set up, it is just good to go. It just eases a lot of that mental anxiety for you. Everything will be safe and secure. And then even if you do uh, spill your coffee on it, or even if your dog does do it, the planner itself, like the contents of the planner, will still be accessible to you. If this gets destroyed, your planner does not get destroyed. You know, if this is gone, your planner is thankfully not gone. This used to like just bring me out in a cold sweat <laughs> when I used to use physical planners, you know, the thoughts of losing it, leaving it somewhere. Oh no, I know it. I know people who it has happened to and yeah, it's not a fun experience. But again, if you work in a home office like me and hardly ever leave the house or you don't bring your planner with you when you do leave the house, Physical is probably just fine, but maybe just don't leave cups of coffee or tea or water or any liquid, anything spillable. Don't leave it alone with your dog. <laughs> Still some considerations, even if you don't leave the house. Hey to all the hermits. <laughs> Something else to consider is whether you need to share your planner. Does your partner need to see it? Do your kids need to have access to it or a colleague? With a physical planner, that may mean leaving it out somewhere, for example, where the other person can see it. It may mean jotting some things down on a big family wall calendar or something. It may mean, you know, having a planning meeting on a regular basis so that you and your partner, for instance, can kind of like sync up and let each other know what are the important upcoming events. You can go through everything that you each have planned in so that you're both on the same page and you can coordinate your schedules. Those are definitely good options, particularly if you don't have to coordinate on a lot of things. 
Again, though, it's going to be easier with digital if you do have to coordinate on a lot of things. For example, you can set up a Google Calendar and then share it with whoever else needs access to it. I share a Google Calendar with my husband and we don't like write down everything in there, but just the things that might impact on the other person. So if I have an appointment where I need to leave the house, I will pop that on the family calendar in Google Calendar and then he can just see that I'm not going to be there so he can't you know, plan in a meeting at the same time for instance. And then if you're using something like a digital planner in an app or something, you could just screenshot the page, you know, your weekly overview or your monthly overview and send it to them. Or again, just kind of sit down at a weekly or monthly meeting and coordinate your schedules. And then flexibility or customization in terms of the layout and how you use your planner. A big bugbear of mine is a planner that does not have equal space for the weekend days, you know, you've got Monday, Tuesday, all the way through Friday, and then Saturday, Sunday, squashed in at the bottom. That makes no sense to me because sometimes I'm busier on the weekends. Like let's say you work Monday to Friday, which I think very few people actually do these days, but sometimes your work days are lighter loads because you know what you have to do at work. Like you don't really have to take down a lot of things unless you do a huge amount of meetings or something. Whereas weekends are probably the time where you're running errands and you're catching up on all of your personal tasks and you know, maybe you've got some trip planned or something like that. So yeah, the lack of space for weekends in a lot of planners is very frustrating for me. Or let's say you just have a lot going on in your daily life. Maybe you've got a lot of meetings to attend, etc. A lot of planners don't have, again, because of, you know, portability <laughs> concerns, they're not massive, huge planners. And if they were, you wouldn't be bringing them anywhere with you. Maybe you're trying to keep track of multiple things, you know, like your own work and then your kids' activities, your partner schedule. A planner that does not have a lot of space or at least like a day per page is probably not going to work for you. So consider how many things you need to write down in a day. How many things are you trying to like keep track of all in the one place? Similarly then, if you find that you often need to move papers around or add in extra note paper every now and again, something like a thread bound planner is not going to work for you. You're going to need something like a ring bound planner or a disc bound planner where you can open up the rings um, and just move papers about, add papers in, even things like receipts and all those types of things, you can add in to these types of planners. So do you need that flexibility where you need to move pages around or add pages in or even take pages out? Like thread bound, you can do that, you can rip them out, but after a while, it's going to uh, kind of like, it's gonna play with the structure of the planner. After a while, all the pages are just gonna fall out. Or again, digital might be the way to go there if you do find that you need to move papers around and add in papers in particular without adding to the bulk of the planner. With digital, you can add in as many extra pages as you need, basically. You know, sometimes I like to spread out a bit or, you know, it's a particularly busy day and I need to kind of take extra notes as I go. Maybe I want to brainstorm something and I don't necessarily want to keep reaching for a different notebook or something. I want to keep everything in the same place, particularly because I use my planner as a memory keeper also. You know, I use it to look back over everything that was happening and I like to see uh, all of my lists and various things. Sometimes it's fun to look back at a list and be like, oh yeah, that was the day I was working on that particular project. Or you look at kind of a, you know, like a brainstorming list or something and you're like, oh yeah, that was when I came up with the idea for this new thing that I'm currently working on or whatever. You know, I just like to see everything all in the one place because it builds a more complete picture of my life. But then I don't need that every single day. So I don't need a physical planner that has a lot of pages that would be far too cumbersome for me, but I like the ability to be able to add them in when and if I need them. Again, the benefit of digital is that you can add all of those extra pages without adding to the bulk or the weight of the planner. And cost, because let's face it, the planner life can be an expensive life. Now it definitely does not have to be. I consider myself a very minimalist planner person. Even when I was using a physical planner, I just used like a cheap pen and just one black 
ballpoint pen. Um, I didn't really use a ton of stickers or washi tape or anything like that, so I didn't have those additional expenses. But I did tend to buy <laughs> expensive planners, uh, particularly ones that were discontinued that I fell in love with and had to have and then you have to pay like over the odds because they're not available anymore. I'm not gonna be able to get this back up here now. <laughs> but yeah, that's all of these leather band beauties, like my Filofaxes and stuff. Those, even though I wasn't buying the additional stuff, that alone was adding up. Now again, you can definitely keep the cost very low, but if you have any interest in kind of pretty planning or you know, decent durable planners or washi tape, stickers, fountain pens, like planner covers, even just different colored pens. Yeah, <laughs> those add up quickly. Factor all those things into the cost of your planner because there's no point buying something cheap and cheerful if you then have to, uh, you know, splurge on stickers to make it look the way you want. The reason I love digital for this is that there are so many different price points out there. You can even get some free digital planners. Now they may not be, you know, they may not have all the features and stuff that you want, but they're definitely a good starting point. And also just one uh, stylus, like your Apple Pencil or whatever you use, is going to get you all of the different colors of the rainbow and all of the different types. You know, like if you just want to write, if you want to highlight, if you want to erase, it's all in the one implement. And same with stickers, like you can buy one sticker pack and just reuse them over and over again. This is wonderful. The stickers, I don't know if anyone is like me, but I used to buy stickers you know, that were really pretty, but then they were too pretty to use. <laughs> it's like if you get a really nice candle, then it's too nice to actually burn. <laughs> Whereas these, like these I can just use over and over again. I can't like use them up. That's wonderful. So for me, digital is usually the most cost effective. And then I'm not going to say a single thing about sustainability, because I think someday I probably will come out with a physical planner and I don't want this video to come back and bite me in the arse. <laughs> if you are thinking that a digital planner is probably the way to go for you, you know, with all its flexibility and portability, then the My Life Story 2022 digital planner is available now. Links to learn more and grab yours are in the description. And let me know when you are considering a planner, what is the biggest consideration for you? Until next time then, grab me le maghwev. I'll just my shift to Sloan. Oh, I'm gonna have so much fun taking the thumbnail <laughs> for this video. I'm just gonna be holding all of the planners. <sighs> I do love them all, even though my preference is digital. I still love all of my planners, which is why I've kept them all. <laughs>